And welcome to so, the Stephen and Michael Show, the only show on the internet hosted by the two sexiest fat men alive. Yes, this is true. This is verified by the USDA. We're certified the people who grade meat. Nothing, no guys allowed. <laughs> Fuck those skinny <laughs> bitches. What? Fuck those skinny bitches. <laughs> Oh, we want those bitches well, with the fat ass in this motherfucking club. Jesus. Well, that was Michael, and I'm Steven, also known as Steven. <clears throat> and sometimes my friends, I let my friends call me Steven. Do I, does anyone call you Steve? It's because he's not. They want to keep their teeth for grand larceny. <laughs> <laughs> I still love oh. the time uh, when I did that guest review for you, uh, Michael. You 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 said it was like best friend, co-host, the Nobel Peace Prize winner. <laughs> Al Gore. <laughs> what what was my Nobel Peace Prize for? Uh, for anime titties. That sounds that sounds about right. Brought goodwill towards men with those. There you go. I mean, if the so, world all just masturbated, we'd all be at peace. No one would be at war because our hands would be too tired to press the buttons. The, the next Metal game. Gear game? <laughs> the only way, the only winning move is to masturbate. Yes. Um, was that, that guy, that Japanese guy who holds the world record for the longest masturbation session for being like 10 hours or something? Yeah. He's got a girlfriend. Too, nah, and she's like totally open. Yeah, nine it. hours. Yeah, his girlfriend's cool for two. She times him. That guy is like, nice. yeah. <laughs> he sure oh, is, Michael. That's comfortable. Okay, so today with us we have uh, Absurdist Scribbler. Yep, also known as Alex Xander or. He's Alex Xander fucking... the Great. And today we have Jaren. The yep. man, the myth, the legend oh. himself. The man who Mike once called me the Hannibal Lecter of Tumblr. Well, I somebody you fucking ate some... that guy alive with uh, yeah. with some. Uh, someone once called me the night. filthy Frank of Tumblr. I I didn't know how to take that. What? Who called you the filthy Frank of Tumblr? Some anon. One time I got an anonymous message saying you're the filthy Frank of Tumblr. I'd say that's a compliment because filthy Frank is a very he may be divisive, but he's definitely dedicated to his craft. Like Filthy th filthy Frank, you take it up the ass. That also, sounds he about right. spits fire and he gets on the mic. I don't know if I've done that yet, but who knows? Even you spit fire in every fucking episode. That's what you call you it? You spit fire on the Discord the other day. You burned away the fucking comments. Hey, now. Discord's been through a lot. Oh, it's man. Yeah. So, so, I was watching, so I was going through YouTube today, and I saw a video on, uh, on Lost Media, which is always one of my... One thing I always find really interesting... It was a, a video on like what was it the fifteen, the fifteen lost Disney shows and cartoons that we'll probably never see again. Oh yeah. Uh, it was like, so do any of y'all have an interest in uh, lost media? I know uh, I do. I guess. So. Uh, I mean, I I find it fascinating that some form of media can just be gone because you know I've, I've grown up in this age what they call you know this information age where they, they information is just readily available on the internet it was like this wasn't a saying when i was really little but as i was going through middle school you know you hear the saying once you put something on the internet it's there forever oh, sure you know is. Sure. so i'm used to that kind of thing so the thought that some form of media can just be gone and no one be able to watch it or enjoy it. It's not. It just pops up. 
That's what happened yeah, to all it, my it, selfies it, on Tumblr. Oh, there you go. That almost uh, happened to Toy Story too. Which really? Cool. Have you guys heard? You guys haven't heard that story? What story? No. The Toy Story two. Oh, they almost, Toy Story. Oh yeah, it almost got deleted. Like, but like, yeah, it it got deleted at the Pixar headquarters. It got deleted. Like they had gotten rid of the entire film. Yeah, the whole thing. What had happened was they were able to recover it, not because of like someone went through like the files and found an extra like copy somewhere, but because one of the employees had downloaded the file and taken it from work to show to her kids. Wow. Nice. We would we means- would have lost one of Pixar's greatest movies if it weren't for someone wanting to show it to their kids. <laughs> Pixar's best sequel. Yeah, I mean that's one of the few Actual good sequels. I mean, come from a Disney movie. I mean, yeah, Disney see. Disney sequels usually aren't that. Um, that's because Disney usually relegates the sequels to the um, the Disney Toon Studio. Oh yeah, they're usually really low budget and have severe downgrades in technology. Oh man. Though I mean, man, there are a probably... couple of Disney sequels I'd say they're pretty good, not as good as the original, but they're enjoyable in their own right. Particularly, I was talking about the old style ones, like the Aladdin sequels, and uh, I mean, Cinderella. yeah, I I enjoyed the Aladdin sequels when I was uh, yeah. Oh, I remember genre. the third one being. I remember the third one being a bit more enjoyable than the second. Yeah, well, the second one is more like a pilot for the cartoon. The third one is more like its own thing. Yeah, yeah, the sec- Yeah, that's what I would say about the second one. I mean, and also I did. I really did. Enjoy, I really did enjoy that cartoon. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good one. I know some people um, didn't like it, but I thought it was an enjoyable test cartoon. Test one too. One that had uh, one that I'd say actually was better than the original release was an extremely goofy movie. And I've brought this up before. I, like I think them, so. I, like them both. I, I I I do like them both. What? I think I hold them both in the same regard. An extremely goofy movie, but I've also never heard anyone say say too much like positive about it. No, really. I always thought it was good. Um, I remember watching that one in when I was in elementary school. I've heard people <laughs> compare it unfavorably to the first movie. Really? <laughs> well, really? That surprises huh. me. Oh, well, yeah. it doesn't have. It apparently, doesn't have as much emotion. It cuts out Roxanne. Well, yeah, Roxanne is gone. A very love interest. For a love interest. But uh, yeah, it was like, but yeah, like I said, uh, watching the thing about lost media and cartoons that can just be gone. Like, uh, any of you ever watched that one cartoon, uh, Timo Supremo? Nope. I feel like I have. It was that cart. It was that cartoon about three little kids who became superheroes. Oh my god, didn't Mr. Enter review that recently? Maybe. Or like a while back. I don't know, but that, that was a cartoon I remember watching a lot when I was younger, when it was on a Toon, Toon Disney. And so you, like you, cartoons. You, you can't find that cartoon anymore, apparently, from what I've heard. Oh, yeah. that, it's like that, cartoons where they like have it on TV. Yeah. And then there's nothing. Like no DVD releases, no... And once they stop showing it, it's gone. It's like I, I enjoyed watching that cartoon when I was younger. Um, I I liked it, but um, it, it's just gone. It's just gone. I can ne- I could probably never see the whole thing again. That's such a weird thing. I mean, that's still in practice today. I mean, they, like Disney has still been like, what release Gravity Falls in? You know, in season Blu-rays. We'll get to that never. One. Yeah, we oh, can hear you. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I heard that. Uh, just, just sure. uh, so, hey, since we're talking about lost stuff, you want me to go on with my story? Because I don't have much time here. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, Jared apparently works in a, what did you say, publishing. Company. We, won't say for what, uh, we won't say for what company, but he works in the publishing business. Nice. And um, he's going to share with us some of his horror stories of some of the uh, quote-unquote books that people have tried to pass off. Yep. 
I am so excited to tell this one tale because this is kind of, I wouldn't say what put me on the map, but I can tell you it's definitely something that I could keep doing. All right. So as it was just announced, I'm an editor for a publishing company. Sweet. Way back when, when the first Fifty Shades of Grey movie came out. So this is already a thing that's going to tell you story. Uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm going to give the extended cut here. I know I typed it down and everything, but I'm just going to say it all off of memory right now because I feel like that's better than just reading it off of text post. So, I think it was a Thursday. What happened, it's just your typical day. I'm just kind of screwing around, doing whatever, waiting for my next assignment. When I see this teenage girl who looks like something of a tomboy, but imagine a Tumblr, like, girl but not nearly like as deep into the rabbit hole like she didn't have her hair cut up or anything else she just had the boys clothes on like the guy polo the guy shorts it was just like uh, okay and then this and then whoever obviously as her mom walks in she's this big fat suburban mom because the area i live in has a suburban next to it All right so um, they both look really happy, and so I just give them the general, like, hi, how are you doing? I'm Jared, blah, blah, blah. And they just cut right to business, which usually I like that, but in this case, it was a bit rude. She's like, hi, I'm Chelsea, I think her name was, and this is my daughter, who I forget what her name is. And we just, she wrote this book, and she's really excited about it. It's a very romantic book, is what she told me. And she just, after many times of trying to see, get publishing companies to meet with her or to meet with publishing companies, we finally just ended up here. And I'm like, okay, uh, a little backstory here. My uh, little brother is also a young author who is trying to publish his book. So I can resonate with that. Right. Anyway, yeah. so um, she hands me the novel and I look at it. The I I, I um, you could probably find it on the text post, but it was like enigmatic necessities, and I like oh god, please don't tell me and because I sat down and I'm like, you know what movie just came out? Fifty Shades of Grey. You know what this sounds like? Some kind of porno. Sounds like Batman Riddler porno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so then she starts going. Batman. Oh my god. So then, <laughs> so then she goes and she starts rambling about how her daughter won like several creative writing competitions and how she's like amazing and her counselors recommended that she try to write a novel and that this is what she wrote. So I start reading. Um, it's in the first person of a, I think, I think it was a college um, freshman, sophomore, I don't know, uh, this guy who we're going to call Tom. Tom is your typical nerdy bullied kid, which I don't know how in college being bullied happens. That's usually just called harassment at that age. Okay. But anyway, so he's like bullied because he's all nerdy. He likes his NES or whatever she game console. She just decided to say he likes. Um, he loves playing and games on the Commodore 64. He likes to play on the Jaguar. He, he loves his Jaguar. He loves playing games on the Jaguar. No, I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> the 3 do Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right, let me... All right, collecting myself now. All right, so um, it's actually fairly well written. I'll give her that, even though it's just boring description about who he is. And then it wasn't until, like, towards the ha middle part of, like, the second page where I read, unfortunately, I am still a virgin or something along those lines. And then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. You knew. Yeah, I knew. I'm like, and then the next paragraph is about this uh, chick that he just starts talking about. We're going to call her Samantha. And uh, I'm just going to spoil some stuff here and skip over some stuff. Samantha is this, like, crazy chick who has had a bunch of super abusive ex-boyfriends. Uh, so she's, like, black biker jacket with spikes on it and everything else. 
Um, what happens is, is that one day Tom witnesses Samantha literally punch, uh, her abusive boyfriend in the throat. And like, as she, as he's like kneeled over on the floor, he literally, she literally steps on him and puts him to the ground. Now here's where, now here's where it gets fun. Um, Tom Tom watches this, right? Right. And Tom says, hold on. I want to, I want to read this off. Can you guys still hear me? I just closed it. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. I, I want to read this off at least. Uh, she says, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. I felt a tingling sensation down there as it began to harden. Those were the exact words that she used. Oh, geez. So let me just clarify. He describes his dick as it all the time except like two parts and i didn't even read i didn't even finish like i just got to the halfway point and you'll find out why i stopped in a minute and just gave oh, it back to her so um after a while they get the courage he, tom gets the courage to ask her on a date blah 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 and then the thing about it is that like samantha starts like hardcore venting to him and starts crying and tom gets really turned on by this and, and like every time they're together and she mentions crying Tom's like it's it, it's happening it's getting harder and I'm just like can I die I'm not paid at least, he this. Didn't, at least he didn't call it his little boy <laughs> <laughs> oh no the little boy is going at it again <laughs> like that's, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. I'm gonna die. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. Anyway, he's getting oh off. To her, he's getting off to her oh. crying. Oh. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. <laughs> All right. So one day, Tom wakes up, and it is as hard as it can be, and he just straight up says, and I quote. I would masturbate, but it doesn't do anything for me anymore. Bullshit. <laughs> what man has ever said that? Weak uh, man. <laughs> A weaker man. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, right. uh, uh, harder. Wake up with it harder than it ever has been before. That's just every morning. <laughs> what? Dude, do you not know how morning wood works? Um, <laughs> what, what the fuck kind of health education class did this fucker go to? One in the south? The, the, <laughs> public, one, the public ones that, like, the suburban schools offer? They're, you, they're, like, you have the two marathons? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know that picture of, like, you know that Renaissance picture of, like, the woman and, like, right there where her vagina should be? It's black and there's the fucking devil's face there? <laughs> I probably masturbated to it at some point. <laughs> That sounds about right. You guys have those dictionaries where on the inside was the man and the woman, and it showed the skeletal and the muscle, and then just the man and the woman naked? What? They just had dictionaries that we'd use in, like, grades, like, 7 and 8. They would just be a big, like a big red dictionary. I, I, it would just be, like, English to French translations. Back then, when I, back then when I was in school, it was just hammered into my head that if we have sex, we die of AIDS instantly. And then get God pregnant. Damn. That sounds about right. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? All right. Yeah. So he's getting off to her crying, and he wakes up so, really hard. Yeah, and then he thinks, I get hard every time I see Samantha cry. What if I just look up videos of girls crying, and he fucking does that? Jesus Christ. So, hold on. Hold on. I want you to stop for a minute. Realize that this girl is, like, 16 years old, and what she wrote next is literally a masturbation scene. Oh, jeez. No. So, I thought it didn't do it for him anymore. Uh, well, we're getting there. So she, he looks up the video and he starts going. I'm not even joking. There's a quote that says, oh, I feel so good. I haven't felt it, I haven't felt it this good since I did it when I, since the first time I did it when I was 10. Oh, God. Starting early, ain't you? <laughs> Oh, and then, no. and then he sa- and then the dude says it takes him like literally twenty minutes. And then I shit you not, quote. And then I felt it, white hot gooeyness slithers out of my penis and all over my fl- desk and floor. 
No. Jeez. <laughs> he really hasn't done Hold that in a while. Hold on. Hold on. Nice Hold on. I'm not done yet. But, and then he's, he continues, I know it's not scientifically possible, but it felt like it was two weeks worth of semen that finally exited me. I uncontrollably twitched and moaned as loud as possible. Oh, Jesus. Uh, this oh, guy God. Has been chill. Why did that remind me of Sword Art Online? The two years <laughs> worth of semen came glopping into her. Is it you because what, it's if... as terrible as Sword Art Online? It, it was probably a reference to it, like, if I know people, like, just, if you looked at the girl, and then you look at, like, SOA fans, you would say, yeah, it probably was a reference to that. <laughs> Two weeks worth of semen. <laughs> Finally Two exited me. Weeks. How do you go a day? <laughs> Having a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even then, well, this is the point. I, I, I just, I took. Here's the thing. If anyone knows me, I take off my glasses and just dramatically kind of like wave them around whenever I'm really annoyed. So I accidentally did that, and then the mother's like, "Is something wrong?" And I'm like, "I just get headaches or whatever. They're random, but I should be fine." I just put on my glasses and, and continue. Ugh. So Samantha and Tom really start to like each other. And then Tom starts wanting to have sex with Samantha. The condition is that he wants to see her cry when they're doing it. Jesus. Oh my god. Yeah. Baby's first we're... fetish. What the fuck? I'm confused. In the beginning, it showed her punching some guy and he got a heart on. But now it's uh-huh. not that. You realize this girl is probably going to grow up to white cuck, aren't you? Yep. He's gonna write cuck and um vor, maybe. <laughs> oh my god, no, dude, vor is like an essential part of another one of these stories I want to tell. Oh god, we'll oh, get dear. to that. We'll get to that. We'll, okay, so that's he a wants different her, episode. He wants, to, he wants her to cry while fucking. Yeah, right. so after a lot of bullshit pages, I'm just skimping through at this point, but I'm making sure that like I'm doing, I'm reading long enough so that way they think I'm not just ignoring every bullshit detail. It's just like t- typical high school teenage bullshit, but they're in college, so like so they go mean. to movies, everything else. Never mind finals exams. Never mind that. They're just like screwing around. Not re- not literally, but just figuratively. They're going to like burger joints, everything else. It's just. Movies, kissing, premature ejaculation, other bullshit. So wait, were the mom and daughter just waiting while you read this? Yeah, the thing is, is that uh, if I'm interested in it, I'll tell them, hey, wait a minute, Uh, let me continue reading. I'm actually kind of into this. I want to see where this goes. Whereas usually you just, or at least in my life, at least what I've always done is I just appraise it in like the first two, three, four pages, whatever. And then I just throw it back to them. Yeah, we'll do it. Or I'm like, no, take it back. Leave. Yeah, that's just, but then again, I do have a bit of a higher position than most people there. Oh, Jared's the boss. No, no, I am not. Oh my God, I wish I was the higher than boss. You will be known as Big Boss. (laughs) Oh my God, I love the fact I'm being compared to Big Boss right now. Does you get? Anyway. Does it get you as hard as seeing girls cry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, it's okay. So they're going to burger joints and typical high school stuff, even though they're in college. Yeah. Okay. So then I get the half the, the halfway novel. Are you guys ready for the first time? Tom and Samantha have sex, or what? Oh they boy, call sex? I'm hard. I'm as hard as can be. <laughs> get your tissues ready, gentlemen. <laughs> for which tier Tom so one day Tom straight get up me. tells what's up get my tissues ready for which tier get your tissues ready tears out of my for... head tears out of my head uh, oh both. yes both yes tears out of your head yes <laughs> alright so Tom straight up tells her one day I can only get off if I hear you cry <laughs> and this is the point where I'm like what? Let's just dive right fucking in. Okay. 
Yeah, but they're like they're like going to her dorm room or something like that. I don't know. So Samantha just smiles and she says, "I know exactly what you want, darling." And here's the thing: she has this weird thing where she always calls him "darling" in the next few sections. Oh. So they enter her dorm room, and apparently, I don't know how this is even legal, but she hollowed out one of her rooms and t- turned it into a BDSM sex room. Why? Like that's just like like there's the kitchen, the living room, and then the and then like there's not even a bedroom. There's just the sex room right next door. There's a sex dungeon. Why? Yep. Boy, can't wait for the next student in cassette room. Yeah. <laughs> At least didn't say I couldn't. <laughs> so it, so as I said earlier, I hired this a is, contractor. This... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sorry, continue. I don't even know how. I don't even know how this would have happened in like the real world. Like, why? Why do you? What? What are your friends saying? I don't imagine you have too many friends, but still. I mean, if you have a sex dungeon in your dorm room, I don't think you have too many. Friends. You more like have customers at that point. <laughs> or clients. So, clients. Clients is the preferred term. Whatever. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, des- they're desperate guys. Let's just. Uh, wh- why do we need to hide it? Let's just tell it how it is. Anyway, so they go into the sex dungeon. Tom is just shocked. He's just like, would... oh my god, what is this? Like, I you think that. Hope, Tom. I think there was like. I think the entire next page was dedicated to like just the description of the sex room and the toys. I mean, if you if bring you in the sex the room, you have to describe it in detail. Yeah. You do, yeah. but not in the insane amount of detail. Like, they even, like, there were stains on the floor. Jesus. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, that's one detail no one wants to know about your sex Best in a mop in a bucket. Jesus Christ. Yeah, this is some not that we're talking about. You get it for, like, ten bucks. You can like, get a up, sex dungeon in your dorm room. I'm sure you can afford a mock. Jesus Christ. They, get a they, they, they have enough money to go eat gourmet burgers despite being college kids. Is a mop really too much to ask? Is this a wish fulfillment fantasy? It has to be. Probably. Did I did I already preface this by saying that like this is like this case sure. this was around the fifty shades of gray fat yeah. and like a bunch of people wanted these novels? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that that that's that's all you need Anyways, to know. He's describing the room. Anyway, so, so we get to the, we get to the actual. Oh, nothing. I was describing the room. It's a movie directed by Tommy Wiseau. It stars Tommy Wiseau, written by Tommy <laughs> Wiseau. It's about a banker who. All right. All right. Anyways. All right. Yeah. So so he describes the room, and now they're getting to it. Yeah, so she just starts undressing him, and then, like, as soon as he takes off her pants, he literally just fucking comes all over her. He's quicker like, than... I, I have no comparison. This is just... so, <laughs> so, hold on, hold on. Are you guys ready for the next freaky shit? This next line. So, she looks into his eyes, and she gives him this huge smile. And I'm not joking. What she wrote was that she proceeded... To lick the semen off of her face, off of her doesn't say her face, anything else. And then he, and then she licks Tom. But here's the thing: the way she described it, she described it as he literally comes on her scalp, and she somehow gets her tongue to reach her scalp. <laughs> Fucking lizard tongue just left that shit up. <laughs> like. Uh. Is it then, and then she then reveal that she's actually a lizard person. <laughs> she's she's Hillary Clinton's daughter. <laughs> uh, the lizards are infiltrating anyways. the pornos. So after she's licked herself in Tom Clean, <laughs> what happens next? And then she introduces him to the wonderful world of botched BDSM. Oh, oh. no. All right, guys. Let Let's take a minute. Are you guys ready? I don't think we can be, part. but go ahead. I don't think. All right, we're are you ready for this? Spiked testicle clamps. <laughs> oh, there it is, boys. We did it. 
Oh, trust, trust me, darling, they will make you come faster and harder, says Samantha. I don't think there's, so, any, there's no phrase that is less sexy in the English language than spike testicle clamps. Except uh, maybe Hillary Clinton's vagina, that might be less sexy. Or just Hillary Clinton, you could have stopped there. Amy Schumer? Uh, okay, so uh, it's it's at least top ten. Top ten least sexy phrases. I would Spike put it at number two. Clamp. Oh, no, here's here's a, uh, a even less sexier thing. Here's a less sexier thing, uh, sounding. I mean, actually, uh, I've got a good one. Uh, 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 who was in the latest David Cage game, Beyond Two Souls? Um, oh, no, no. Who no, was that? No. Wait, what is sounding? No, uh, no, 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 no. Sticking no, stuff no, up your no, dick. No, 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 no. Oh, never mind. Let's let's get those testicle yeah. clamps. No, no. Um, <laughs> well, Ellie, Ellie, something or other. Ellen Page. Ellen Page. Yes. So here, no, 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 no. yeah, Ellen so Page. So here's the next David Cage game. A only QTE based game starring Lena Dunham and Amy Schumer, directed and written by David Cage. Oh, I want to die. That's terrible. Anyway, so after the spiked testicle clamps, oh. and then she sounded him. Oh, no, no. Well, she might have. I this is I stopped around this point. Well, so man, instead of feel, <laughs> so instead of feeling intense pain, like she just she just grabs one of them and just like open clamp. Instead of feeling intense pain, he literally just just comes again. Like, That's I, not how that would work. That would be incredibly painful. I should have prefaced. I should have prefaced this with what I told to the first person I told this, and says that this is a story written by someone who does not know how a penis works. That's like reading any fan fiction. Re- re- any uh, any uh, fan fiction written by a woman about a guy having sex is like, do you not know how th- that works? Yeah, that's how. Uh... That's yep, that sure is how penises dick. work. The Women dick exploded. It's just a fact. Yeah, the dick it's, exploded. It's like, uh, I, I hope he called 911. Oh my god, is he okay? <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so the testicle clamps after she clamped them down. <laughs> Quote, I felt the cum get forced out of my right testicle and immediately zipped all the way out my dick and all over the floor. Zip. Oh, <laughs> I just, at this, at this Did point, my mouth. on the page? Jesus Christ. Crawl at this point. in my skin. These wounds, they were so <laughs> <me on. laughs> So at that point. Uh, wake me up. I'm in a dream, snake eater. Wake me up, wake me up inside. Wake me um, up before you go, go. Don't keep me hanging on like yo yo. Keep me hanging on like uh, the central <laughs> thing. So, so like, so like, one of my neighbors just walked by, hearing that last part, and he walked by even faster. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Oh, okay, so after the testicle clamps, you, what? You, that's when you close the book. No, 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 not done, not done, not done, almost done, not done. So she places the next one on, and then it's it's party time from there. So it's both done. are just both oh. are just clamped on, and she is just he, they're just they're just having sex. Uh, apparently, it's just boring missionary sex. Like he's just into it, and I, the, the, he's like, I'm mesmerized. And I'm just so confused. I'm like, you're having Spike literally rip apart your scrotum. I would not be mesmerized. I'd probably be mesmerized by the pain, but not the pleasure. He, uh, here's where it gets worse. He said, quote, her inside felt warm, clean, and unused. It was then that I realized she was a virgin, that also a virgin. I heard a pop upon my next thrust and knew that I was the one who took her virginity and she took mine as well. Is this guy okay. I'm going to call I'm going to call bullshit because there is no virgin in the world that has a BDSM sex dungeon. 
you know, actually, I would probably say there probably is the case where someone is like super into it, but they've never felt like they could express that to someone. Yeah, uh, I, I guess well, there, there might be that one fringe thing, but I, I, you know, I, 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 I feel like that, that was actually wasn't that like actually one of the plot points for the actual Fifty Shades of Grey, where the like he he has it all built up, but he's trying to look for the right no. person to do it. No, I don't think so. I think. Uh, no, that ain't a thing. Oh, no, <laughs> no one. Sorry, I'm in pain. Okay, so uh, <sighs> all right. So where are we? Um, uh, we're suffering? almost done. Yeah. We're, we're almost done. So, so and they that's... both took each other's virginity and they used. BDSM. I like to reiterate that that you've told me that there were stains on the floor. Yep. But she's a virgin. Yep. Do you think I'm making this up? Like this is what I read. Oh, Jesus Christ! Wake me up! Wake me up! What is continuity? <laughs> Have you? If you work in my line of work, you will notice like it makes you notice continuity errors. My job has ruined like me watching or reading stuff because I will pick it apart like this. I will sit down and analyze every last little detail and notice when something breaks continuity. About to... Wait, wait. I forget. Do you watch JoJo or no? No. No. Although I keep being told I need to watch it. That's a good show. But that's that's the point. So, uh... Stephen, you want to talk about that coffin at the end of the first part? Oh yeah, yeah, the coffin that uh <laughs> the bullshit the co- coffin. The bullshit coffin, I like the sound of that. The, Araki, he's a great writer, great artist, but sometimes he just forgets continuity. Although I think I did the anime try to fix it? I don't I think they tried to fix it in the anime, but um anyways, uh so they they've deflowered each other. What next? We're almost done here. All right. And then, so the last line I read was him saying, I felt it closer, closer, closer. I'm not even joking. They put, uh, uh, uh. I'm not even fucking joking. That was written in its fucking text. You mean like the fake, the I fake hope- text people put online? Yep. Like, like jumbled letters? Yep. So I really want- actually wrote that in their book. Jumbled yep. wet letters to to represent ejaculation. I'm not even joking. I wish you were because then I could keep on believing that the world is a good and beautiful place. Now I'm and you oh, said my, how my, old was my, this girl that wrote this I, book? She's like she was like sixteen, seventeen. Jesus. But. So, before I go on, Mike, I guarantee you, you're going to like magic gone wrong a lot more than this story. Oh, goodness gracious. I because love magic, magic gone wrong is like so bad it's funny. Not to the extent of my immortal, but like, you, you, you got that message I sent you. It's, there was a black oh, wizard yeah. called MC Wiz, and he turns a white kid into a literal salting cracker. Oh goodness! Anyway, that's funky somehow. That's a different story for a different time. In fact, I might tell that story next time instead of fuck tape. Oh jeez. Anyways, so, so um, is that so where you I stopped? Just, that's where I stopped. I just glared at her. I do. I do the stupid thing where when I'm annoyed with someone, I kind of like put down my glasses a little bit and look at them without my glasses. I look like a complete idiot because I'm totally blind without them. So I just I could see her expression and you could just see her heart just like die and sink all the way down to the bottom of her body. Oh God. I closed the packet and I'm like, I I'm sorry, but I cannot in good faith publish this. Well, why is that? The mother asked. And then the kid's face just tenses up and I look at her, I look back at the mother, and I'm like, I really think you should review your child's writing before presenting it to a publisher. I just handed it back to her, or I think I already mentioned that. 
And then I just told her, thank you, but no thank you. Have a nice day. And then the daughter just had this destroyed look on her face. The mother was so confused. And then she starts reading something, or at least I thought she did. She kind of, like, opened it as she was leaving and just started looking through it. I can only imagine what the car ride was like. <laughs> oh, I bet that mom would have been so fucking embarrassed. So, so the later the next week, did they find like a trash bag with an unidentified body on the side of the road? <laughs> <laughs> that ha- the, where I work, that happens all the time. So probably. Oh my fucking right. god! I'm so, so do you got time? Do you got time for another story? Uh, right now, I'm still trying to, like, sit down and, like, remember fuck tape. But, that, that like I said, fuck tape is a really extensive... I didn't say it on here. I said it in the chat. Fuck tape is really extensive. Well, in you fact, don't need it, to give us an extensive story. Give us a, a short one. I'll give you the shortened version, and then I'll tell you the full version next time I can come on the show. All right. The shortened, the shortened version is that fuck tape is about this guy who had a girlfriend, and she dies in a horrific accident. And ten years later, uh, they're burying the girl, according to what I read. Ten years later, so they, they just kept funeral. that corpse in a box for ten years. <laughs> That's basically what, what happened. And mm-hmm. so then he's just all depressed, mopey, and then he meets this guy, and then it's supposed to be it's supposed to go from like depression to like a gay comedy and then gay smut jeez and then like the moral of the story was like being gay helps you get over your depression that's caused by dead loved ones or something like that what What? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's how it works so and then there's a reason why I call it fuck tape and you'll find out later that sounds like a quote from like a Doshinjin. It was like, okay, choke down a pee pee to chase away your pee pees. I, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, suck on a wee wee to chase away your pee pees. I don't know. <laughs> Do you write the Shining Dragon line? The Shining <laughs> Dragon line? I have three. D- I have three size D batteries lodged inside my asshole as a defensive measure. I call it the Shining Dragon. Um, the other story that I will mention after that is what I call the Razor Incident. Oh, jeez. I'm afraid. The, hold on, hold on. Let me stop you right there and say the Razor Incident is not sexual. It is a really stupid crime mystery. Oh, that's even better. Oh yeah, with this one. Yeah, and guess what? There is a special appearance by the ghost of Jack the Ripper. Good old saucy Jack coming back. For, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna spoil it for you. This is supposed to be like the murder mystery, and then you find out it's a supernatural murder mystery. Oh boy. So I basically, bet, I about bet somebody read Odd Thomas. Thomas. Oh, God. It's basically Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy all over again, just like, except it didn't kill me when I first played through it. Or, well, rather read through it. Well, David Cage killed you? That's it. I'm calling the FBI. They gotta take me to David Cage killed millions of innocent people just by releasing his fucking game. He almost fucking broke my arm. I couldn't play fucking Heavy Rain. Cause I said, like, <laughs> David Cage is real and he sucked my dick once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vic really sucked my dick. David Cage is real and he sucked my dick. I need to get a fucking better motion controller so I can actually play the damn game. Just, tu- uh, just don't turn worry, on the don't, easiest don't, difficulty. Don't don't or bother with the most controls. Use the regular controls. Don't bother with the most ones. Does heavy does um deadly premonition belong in the same category as like the David Cage games? No, uh, it's actually no, good. no, no. It's actually good. Deadly Premonition. How can you forget? Life Deadly is Premonition is like, from what I've heard, it's like the greatest argument that video games can be so bad it's good. It, it's it's actually really good. Don't forget the Sinner Sandwich. Deadly Premonition put more I, care into its world than 
any David Cage game uh, ever, except for Omicron. I haven't heard great things about it, but I haven't heard great things in part about the creator. Um, if if you want, if you wanted to play a game that's like watching Twin Peaks, then you want oh, Deadly oh, Premonition. Oh. oh. Mm. But like, does it control well? Does it? Yeah. There we go. Proof that oh. Daisy Cage is true is exists. The Demi gets double teamed by Neil Breen and David Cage. Is that Cortana? And then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Hideo Kojima's in the background, like, "What's going on? I'm so confused. This is even too gay for me. <laughs> this is too co- confusing, even for me." Well, <laughs> when, 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 is, anyway. When Hideo Kojima says something is too creepy for him, you know you fucked up. Yeah, you've you seen, seen the uh, newest the death, trailer, trailer. death Stranding. You'd have to be pretty fucking creepy to scare him. I mean, I, I love it when the actual actors that signed up for that, they said, I have no idea what this is, but I wanted to be involved. No, oh, yeah, that's what Matt So is much saying. more excited because it's so refreshing to know that I'm not the only one who has no idea what Kojima's doing. I don't even think Kojima has an idea what he's doing. Kojima does. I hear that. Um, actually, like it's only his face that's in the game. He's not actually voice acting because he's busy with other stuff. Kojima didn't want him to spend so much time on this. He wanted his friend to be able to do other things in his life because Kojima is the nicest person on earth. Let's be guys. Let's be honest. If Kojima walked up to you and said, "Hey, I, I need you for this thing. You'll get paid for it, but I'm not telling you what it is," we would all say yes. I mean, absolutely. Kojima walked up to me and asked me to suck his dick. I'd do it. Like, <laughs> I will follow that man to the ends of the earth. You wouldn't even. You would, but, you're not even. Did I know. did I show you this terrible YouTube comment? Hmm. You've shown us many terrible it was YouTube on a video. comments. Like, okay, all YouTube comments are fucking cancer. Right. This was, like, on a video, I think, criticizing using famous actors for in the Death Stranding game, because, like, you're only going to buy it because it's actors. But here's the comment here. Uh, I just posted it into the episode chat. So let me... so we can... All right, let's see uh, here. The more I think about how he's acted in recent years, the more I just straight up hate Kojima. Ever since he desperately tried to be cool and famous, I just can't agree with everyone who lo- everyone's love for the guy. It's like, yeah, it baffles me how to this day people can still love people even after he fucks up within the last couple of years. Hell, I'm surprised no one's giving Kojima shit for Metal Gear Solid 5 either. Dude fucking write the game and that's how he wanted it. Besides the microtransactions and the loss of the third chapter, of course. Fucking terrible of a Metal Gear Solid game that was... Wow. Like, Phantom this is Pain the worst. was destroyed because Konami decided to fuck with him. I mean, that's, it probably would have had a fine enough. story if he was actually allowed to complete it. Yeah, like instead they just threw him in a closet and like you can't do anything. And like gameplay wise, I think a lot of people said that it was really fantastic. If like a bit empty open world. Yeah, gameplay wise, I've only played like maybe two hours of it, and I think it has the best gameplay of the whole series. Nice. It's like very open world. I actually can do well at the stealth. You oh, can yeah. steal cassette tapes and listen to kids in America while you shoot people. This you is can fucking. You, you can listen to Final Countdown while destroying an enemy base. Oh my god! Really. I have yeah, find, I found it. I have. I found. Fi- I found final. I found final countdown and then bombarded like the. Um, it wasn't. I think it was OKB zero. You'll find out what that is later. And then I just full on frontal assaulted the place. And then I realized Venom Snake's horn got bigger, and I needed to stop killing people. There was. Um, uh, oh yeah, it gets bigger the more you kill people, huh? Yeah. And oh, that's yeah. How that- how do you get one? Um, a horn, or because I don't, I don't have it in my items. Uh, you just play the missions. You'll unlock a lot. Oh, wait, the horn is just like shrapnel, right? Yeah, the horn is like this chunk of shrapnel. 
which gets metaphorically bigger as you act more evil. Yeah, and then if you just like full on go like true evil, then like Venom Snake just gets permanently covered in blood, and his horn is like a foot long. Or you can get rid of all nuclear weapons. Or am I saying that right? Yeah, Mike, Mike, look up Demon Snake. Oh yeah, hold on. Let's see. You'll see what I'm talking Demon about. Demon Snake is. DJ Snake, middle feet, bipolar sunshine. Shout out. Oh. You see? Oh my god, I think that's already happening to my snake. Uh, That's probably just regular blood. Unless your horn is different, then. I know. Dude, like, get... was like, last I saw him, his face was covered in blood. Yeah, that's. Uh... You, the horn will get bigger first. That's the first sign. And dude, even like that takes a while to get. Like I was halfway through the game when I finally started noticing it got bigger. Or well, the first chapter. So why just... Uh, All right, so um, I really have to get going here. My phone's about to die. So anything else I should say or do before I go? Uh, man, it was great having you on here. We yeah, hope to have you uh, get. We hope to have you again to share more interesting stories from the publishing world. <laughs> yep. Remember, this stays between us four and whoever else sees this video. Exactly. We won't betray your confidence. Nope. Yep. No, uh, who's going to fight? By no, the way, this that. was a sting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, guys. Have fun. All right, thanks we'll for being on. Right. We'll try to have fun without you. It just isn't the same. Oh, you guys Aww. love me, but I'm sorry. The only guy who has ever captured my heart was Big Boss. I understand. And by extension, Kojima. Uh, uh, Farewell, Bob. Uh, nah, big boss. Oh, right, later. I just grabbed Sully from Monsters, Inc.'s testicles. Wait, what? Uh, with, with spike testicle clamps. Yes, exactly. All right, thanks, Jared. <laughs> Thank later. you for your charming story. About the downfalls, maybe. Oh, man. That was an experience. Like Jimi Hendrix. I can't imagine this. There's got to be a lot of stuff that like, goes to like publishers and like early lookers, and they just must be like, why have you given me this? Why is this here? Oh, God. I I don't know. Could I, could I actually do this... Uh... Could I actually do that as a job? I mean, uh, what does it take to do that? I mean, having to read through people's schlock. Um, to do an editing job, probably education and like. No, I mean religion. the mental fortitude. I could never do it. I can't. I could not survive. I'd kill myself by the end of a week. The first week. It's bad enough that I have to read my own shitty writing. I don't want to read other people's shitty writing. I need to get back to my own shitty writing. Uh, but uh, imagine, imagine having to read uh, someone else's schlock that they wrote, and especially around the time when uh, when a new book comes out, and so everybody tries to be that book. Oh my God! Like everyone tries to be the next Hunger Games when the uh, movie came out. Everybody tries to be the next Fifty Shades of Grey, and all those other things like that. Remember all the Twilight likes? Oh, yeah. Boy, do I ever. You know what was even worse, though? Like, after Pride and Prejudice and Zombies came out, like, people tried to jump on that bandwagon. Oh, God, yeah. And Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, in hindsight, was not a very good book. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the only good book to come out of any of those, like, mashups of 
old school and weird horror elements was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. That was a good book. It was weird, but it was good. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was just... I read it and, like, I feel it's so overrated. I don't know why everyone was so... Uh, Android Karenina. Oh, my goodness. See, that's what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. We know the one good, consistent author who will never change... And that would be Ooh. Chuck Tingle. Oh, boy. Ah, yes. Good old Chuck Tingle. And then, not only is he prolific, I... but 30 minutes after an event, it'll here's a novel. I mean, he's quick. I... Man, every single cover I see for his novels looks like it's someone's shit post, but it's real. I want to meet that man. Shake it, well, not shake his hand. Uh, stand at a comfortable distance from him. Just observe. Oh, come on. You know you want to chuck his tingle. I'm going to give you a chance to make up for that. Actually, yeah. Speaking of um, speaking of chuck tingle uh, covers. <laughs> yes. You can go check, you... Out the, yeah, go check out the episode chat. Oh. <laughs> Professor T-Rex teaches me gayness. Actually, this one kind of reminds me of um, Stephen. You might get a little uh, resemblance out of this one. <laughs> they can't run a source. The butt is not enough. <laughs> Leaning his neck back. Uh, I've never wanted. I've never read his book or had any desire to do so. <laughs> I feel like being in the same room as a Chuck Tingle book can cause horrible things to happen in your environment. Horrible, but great. You I mean, know Chuck Tingle. It's like, it's like saying Lord Voldemort that someone will like building will collapse or something. Oh God! I can't. Earlier I, brought up Ratatouille. Who was it? You did. No, no, but someone, I, someone else did because then I thought of something. Yeah, well, uh, Michael said, uh, who said Ratatouille dramatically? Yeah, who did say? That Ratatouille. 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 Because, Ratatouille. and I can't share this in the, um, the episode chat. It'll have to be in the other chat. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Now tell me whose art style that is. I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? Is this Ratatouille porn? <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't. I'm not going to show it to the audience. I can only mm. describe. Steven, what? Uh, uh, Michael, do you recognize whose uh, art style that is? Well, what are you looking at? It looks is it in the me. chat? Look in the porn oh. chat. Porn chat. Let's see. Um. Oh, geez. Who is this? I know this artist. I don't know. Is it the Control Alt Delete guy? I give up. No. It is a famous Cartoon Network series creator. Is this Rebecca Sugar? Rebecca Sugar. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Through Ratatouille porn. Look in the uh, look in the bottom bottom right. You can see her signature and then 07. Wow. I, mean, I knew she's done like stuff like Ed and Eddie po Ed, Ed and Eddie porn, but uh, Jesus Christ, this Ratatouille porn where 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 the guy has has the rat piloting him for sex. I just Oh my god, speaking of rats though, today while I'm sitting there on my computer, I hear my cat Hope. Uh, she's just like meowing in my kitchen. I don't know why she's meowing, but then I hear this little squeak, and then the squeak stops, and I just hear her like meowing and whapping something around the kitchen for like an hour. She's like playing hockey with the dead mouse. Oh, Jesus. Did she's she, like uh, picking it up in her paws and tossing it around. 
Did you Jeez. To tell like you a hacky mom? sack. I was so proud of her. And we speaking of speaking of rats, I think we got one in my in my cabinet. Ooh, nice. Keeps chewing through shit. Set up traps. Little fucker will hopefully be dead in the morning. I like peanut butter. A rat, huh? That's even worse yep. than the mouse. Yep, there's there's a rat in my cabinet. I had a pet I had a pet rat once. Or uh or as the vine said, Jesus Christ, there's a fucking Jew in the cupboard. <laughs> A Jew. <laughs> have you not seen that vine? No, I have seen it. I'm talking to Scribbler. Have you not seen that vine? No, I've seen that vine. I saw you post that vine, and then someone gave you shit for it afterwards. Yeah, someone called me anti-Semitic for posting that vine. Yeah, I remember that. Do people not know what what comedy is? Do they do they not know what a joke is? The joke, the joke isn't about rats or Jews being rats. That's not the joke. The joke is about the person calling the rat a Jew. It's making fun of the person in their thoughts. It's, it's making fun of the person. It's like, uh, have any of you seen the movie Borat? Yes. Yes, it's nice. You know the scene where uh, they're where they're at the um, at the the Jewish fo- the Jewish people's house and they're freaking out and like they see a couple cockroaches and they think the Jews have magically shape shifted into cockroaches and they're throwing money at the cockroaches. Yes, it's like that kind of humor. It's it's you like that. They're, 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 you're supposed to be laughing. Time. You're supposed to be laughing at at them, not. Not the idea of Jews turning into cockroaches. You're laughing at the ridiculous people holding those beliefs. Yeah, you're laughing at the idiot who believes that Jews can turn into cockroaches, not at the Jews themselves. Yeah, that that's what that's what that kind of joke is. The Jew, Jesus Christ, there's a Jew in the cupboard. That's a that's a joke. You're supposed to be laughing at at the moron pulling a gun on a rat, calling it a Jew. You're not laughing at. That's what the joke is. Is that the same binary to the uh, look at the buns on that guy? <laughs> I don't know. I think because he has like the same gun prop, I think, if it was a prop and not an actual gun. No, it's an actual gun. It's an actual 1911. They, yeah, yeah. Do you think he shot that mouse after the vine was over? No. no I, was, that, was, that was obviously a pet thing. rat. That was obviously a pet rat. Pet rats are great. Like honestly, if you're gonna get any rodent, get a rat, because they are the they are the least likely to bite. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're personable. My rat would she would love to climb on your climb on your shoulder and kind of perch there. And then when, and then she would kind of climb inside your shirt and hang out your sleeve. Oh yeah, pet pet rats are great. Um, but um, yeah, that's what that joke. Is it's like our uh, another joke from Borat from like the opening of the movie where he's doing like the news report in in his home country or whatever like the running of the Jews where like oh, yeah. they have like the guy in the Jew costume and he looks like a big gremlin chasing people. Strangely, the actual people of Kazakhstan did not like that. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what that's what the joke is. It's not about the Jews themselves. It's about the ignorant people, and that's what that vine was. That's that kind of humor. I think I still think my favorite scene from that though is the is the national anthem Texas scene. Oh God! Oh God! Remember the time? What was it? Uh, that act at the actual Olympics, whatever country they uh for that country they uh played the uh. The Borat anthem. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. The Olympics. Oh, uh, what was the country? Um, Canada. <laughs> no. Um, Michael, what was the country from the movie? I believe it is Kazakhstan. Yeah, for the actual Kazakhstan or whatever. Uh, they they won like an Olympic medal at one whatever sport whatever year I don't remember, but instead of playing their actual anthem. Someone got confused and actually ended up playing the anthem from Borat, 
where they have phrases such as our country has the cleanest whores around. We have more potassium. Oh boy. Let me see if I can actually find the actual fact about this. You know, that movie, I feel like that movie is one of those ones where it was like a phenomenon when it came out and then it just kind of faded away. It's like the Blair Witch Project. And it's a shame because Borat actually is a very funny movie. But it's kind of the thing. He tried to repeat yeah. the success of Borat with uh, Bruno. Uh, that didn't work oh, out as well. I think that's another thing that kind of did it in like Satcha Baron Cohen fatigue. Like he just kept doing very similar movies to Borat and with diminishing returns. Which is disappointing because when he's Got funny, it. he can be really funny. Yeah, but when but when he's bad, he's really bad. He's very hit or miss. When he hits, he hits it right out of the park. When he misses, it's it's gonna make you cringe hard. Oh yeah. He's kind of like Adam Sandler, except he's he's definitely more talented than Adam Sandler. Oh yeah. Borat spoof Kazakhstan anthem played by mistake. When a Kazakhstan sportswoman wins gold in Kuwait, she is greeted with the obscene parody of her country's national anthem from the film Borat. Oh my god. Yeah. She was said to hear the sound of her national anthem. Instead, the obscene lyrics of the spoof anthem from the film Borat began to play. The lyrics included Kazakhstan industry best in the world. We invented toffee and trouser belt. Kazakhstan's prostitutes cleanest in the region, except, of course, Tur- Turkmenistan's. Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, you very nice place. From plains of Tarshek to northern fence of Jewtown. Come grasp the, might, the mighty penis of our leader from junction with the testes to tip of its face. So oh, my God. Stop the song. I don't know how long it played, but <laughs> she looked around to see if anyone else had noticed the wrong music was playing. They hadn't, so she was forced to listen all the way to the end of the tune with her hand on her heart and a bemused look on her face. Apparently, the organizers had found a copy of the anthem online. They didn't bother checking beforehand. They just looked up Kazakhstan anthem i guess on google search oh my god how fucking stupid can you get they just looked it up on google search and probably clicked the first thing they found it's like it's, i can't even think of a good comparison because that's just like the absolute uh this happened in 2012 i believe yeah this happened in 2012 Wow. Could you imagine that happening, though? That That's so awful. At least we can take comfort. We didn't screw up as hard as an Olympic-level setup guy. Yeah, I don't know if it was Olympic. It was some kind of event. But uh, I don't know which Olympics or what... Uh, but, but that that that's so fucking insane. insane. All right, we see your post, the Demi. Oh boy. But uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, have Have you ever heard of a fuck up that bad? Um, I'm sure I have, but I can't think it off the top of my head. I think you may suck at your job, but you'll never be as bad as that guy. I wonder if he was fired. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He'd probably face some kind of reprimand. I don't know, but uh, take that as a bit of comfort, dear viewers. At At least you haven't fucked up that bad. Or if you have, please let us know so we can talk about that because it will be hilarious. Yeah, we need new topics. We used up all of our before the show started. I don't think we did. 
No, I'm joking. Not a good joke, though. Yeah, and of course, if you're ever feeling bad, remember at least you're not Anthony Birch. Or Phil Fish. Yeah, you're not Phil, Phil. Fitz, Phil Fish either. Oh, God. Michael, do you know about Phil Fish? Is that something you know about? Yep. Phil Fish. Oh, God. And his tan yeah. over Fez. Phil Fez 2 is canceled fish. Oh, boy. Actually, you know what? Actually, I want to talk about them. Among, like, shitty creators, although apparently the guy who does Control-Delete is actually not awful right now. Like, he's actually doing... Uh, t- uh, Bump Tickly? Uh, yeah, but apparently... Bump Tickly, what about him? Tim Buckley, yeah, Tim Buckley. Yeah, I, I went to go... Well, because, you know, have you guys seen the very... The old slash rejuvenated meme of taking the early Control Delete comics and removing the two inner panels? Yeah, I've seen that. It's hilarious. Yeah, I, I'm sure I can share some examples with you guys later, but um, I was curious. Those so are so I much went, funnier than egg, let's be honest. I was curious. I went to his website, and there's actually like a very long and surprisingly not awful like sci-fi mini-comic that's going on. Are you saying he's gotten better since Control of the Elite? Um... I would say yes, actually. The art has improved. I'd say there's an issue that some of the panels still kind of lack dynamism. But there's uh, a general yeah. better... But they're no longer like four... It's not, it's not a four-panel thing anymore. It's actually like comic strip formatted for like a like an 8 by 11 page. Mm-hmm. And Nothing will... No joke... Will, no, no control to lead joke will ever top a loss, so... Mm-hmm. No. God, I remember when that first popped up. Oh, man. But no, surprisingly, this mini-comic is not awful. That's a step up for Tim Buckley. Like, uh, here, I'll actually find the... Um... Oh, no. Remember the time he made fun of uh, the controversy? He did a comic about, what was it, Um, uh, Hatred? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> here, and it, it looked like he made a good comic, making a joke about you know critics and such and how come Grand Theft Auto can do this but it's bad that we do it. It looked like Mm -hmm. that was the joke he was making but no if you read his description for the comic he his comic is 100% serious. Hmm. If if you're curious I posted a picture of like the current update in the episode chat Why is he still running Control of the Lead as a comic? Just make this its own thing. Oh, it is its own thing. He's got like little like it, like it's five issues long. This is really like the fifth issue. My two negatives are that poses still lack a little dynamism and that they're occasionally too cluttered with uh, dialogue. Yeah. But it's not horrible. The characters are from what I've started. Oh, but um, okay. Oh, also speaking of horrible. Creators, anyone see the recent shit with the guy who made Lisa? Uh, yes, you you and I oh, actually Lisa talked about that. Lisa is Lisa. Stephen, you and I actually, I think, talked about that for a fair bit, right? Yeah, I think we chatted about that. Yeah, it was like, how can somebody who made a game so great as Lisa be such an awful cockwaffle? Just be um, an absolute douche canoe. Douche canoe. What a he's he's a he's a white guilt apologist. Oh no! And then he said, he was like, so have video games improved my life? Yes, when they're turned off." I was like, "Dude, you made a video game." If you, <laughs> oh yeah, this meme, uh, control alt delete with yeah. the two inner panels removed. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. First of all, the third one where just one panel was removed. Steven, you'll like that one. Oh God, was well, just one power, just one panel. One, well, one, no, one panel. There are three panels. You'll see it. Is that the? Oh, that that King Crimson one. Yeah. That's fucking hilarious. This is like King Crimson's ability to erase time. <laughs> when did we get a volleyball? It's like I want to know that last one, the one about Street 
fighter. But how does it fucking lead to that? <laughs> you know what? I think it's better that you don't know. I think it's better you just have I that. guess. Okay, and ba- okay, a- answer me. So he definitely based this comic off of um, uh, Gabe and Ty's comic, right? Yeah, um, it was like it's. Yeah, he wasn't original at all. He was totally ripping off other people's ideas. He was ripping. He was ripping off Penny Arcade. Oh yeah, he was, totally was. Which in fact is down in quality a bit, but honestly, going back to read old Penny Arcade is still a lot of fun. Yeah. But um, even like newer ones aren't awful. Yeah, but um, no, yeah, actually, even, book. even the first, even the first um, control of the leap was was a self aware joke. At like, so what's different from uh, what, this is a comic about two guys playing video games? What makes this different from other ones? We have a third character. Yeah, <laughs> we oh. have a third character. <laughs> And you know what's actually really funny is the third character is a watermelon. Yeah. And one of the pivotal third characters in Penny Arcade is the Fruit Fucker 9000. <laughs> 3000. I'm just thinking, oh boy. Cage match. Oh, Sinfest. Yeah, what's Sinfest? I don't know if I want to know. Oh, God. Oh, so uh, something we do need to talk about. The wonderful live stream today that was We Are Number One Live. Uh, yes. yes. It was, Absolutely. I saw it. It was the most wholesome and beautiful thing in the world. It redeemed 2016. I feel blessed. The guy who listen. plays Robbie, he was just so happy. He's such a pure and joyful man. If, I, if I'm correct, isn't he like a Shakespearean actor? Yes. I believe he is. So it's like Charles Martinet. Him. He takes that training with him to Robbie's character. Charles Martinet's a Shakespearean actor? Yeah, Charles Mar- Martinet was a Shakespearean actor before he started doing the uh, uh, voiceovers for uh, Mario. Holy fucking shit, Mario in the goddamn... Sh- Mario was probably in Hamlet. Yeah. Alas, the point, I knew him, Horatio. I think Festive yeah, Shooter yeah, wants yeah, to join it, in the chat. To be or not to be? That is the question. Gay Luigi? <laughs> I mean, that's just, just an amazing people. thought, ain't it? Just uh, that fact that he's a Shakespearean actor. It really is, but let's get back to Robbie before we get totally sidetracked. We yeah, are also, we number one was great. We are also promised for the future a uh, release of in- various instrumental tracks. The whole thing is instrumental, a cappella, just the drum track, just some another track. Amazing. Wonder if this will lead to uh, a revival of Lazy Town. Yes. I can't believe that show isn't still on. I thought it was still going. Well, you gotta remember, it's a show that took a uh, that had a million dollar an episode budget. Damn. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, here's Unreal 3. Go use it to create yeah. this. They, yeah, they rendered the they rendered the backgrounds with, with the Unreal 3 engine. Geek. Also, I have arrived. Ah, uh, shit posters here. Okay. So. Oh, geez, you came in right at the tail end of the episode. Yeah. Well, he is a tail just, end of a person. I just, I'm just surprised neither of you guys have heard about Sinfest. That shit show. Three of us, all three of you. Okay. What is Sinfest? I have never heard of it. Sinfest is a uh, classic example of a good webcomic gone bad. Get so, pictures up. Yeah, yeah. Let me fucking look up Sinfest. Oh my god, is this the one with the little girl with sunglasses on a tricycle or something? That is that this is the one. Oh my I'm god. Guessing I'm guessing the, episode the fucking chat. character just became like a preachy social Became. Justice they movie. were from the from the beginning. The only problem on. was is that instead of being a joke, they became a serious character. Hey Steven, are we deleting this episode chat? 
Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll, have to, I'll have to repost some of these. Uh, oh, man, Steven, I was about to get annoyed again. I thought you were, like, deleting comments in the chat again. I was going to be like, no, Steven, no, what the no. fuck? Not in the episode. No, no, not during the episode, no. Wait until oh, after no. the episode to delete their bad opinions. No, no, I was just going to say after afterwards. I'm going to have to have to put these uh, control I'll delete ones somewhere else. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Time for your balls the... about that. Sorry. Street Fighter might be the funniest. Oh, okay. So the basics of Sinfest is that in the beginning, when it was good, <laughs> it was like a comedy strip, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it revolved around these characters named Slick, who was this short Calvin-looking ass womanizer fucker who was completely overconfident and not at all a womanizer. Hmm. And then. Right. Monique, who is just like this slutty chick who's friends with him, but doesn't really want to date him. And then they had characters like Squiggly the Pig, who's just basically a fucking stoner. Um, Criminy, who was just, just like um, one of Slick's friends, who just read and was, you know, a nerd. Um, hmm. And then it would do like things, certain other gags. God, the devil, Buddha, Jesus. Um, there's a Chinese dragon that just sort of symbolized that sort of mysticism. Oh boy, oh, yeah. a Christian fundamentalist. And you know, it was a, it was kind of funny. The characters were caricatures, but they were supposed to be that. That's why fucking Squiggly, the stoner pig, is a fucking pig, right? Oh, wow. Right. Um, but. A while ago, um, Ishida met someone. Right. I don't know who it was, okay? But um, <laughs> this person left so much. Am I too loud? Sorry. This person left so much of a mark on him that he became this hardcore sex negative feminist. Oh, boy. Jesus. And there's a um, combination of words you could throw together. Yep. And he decided that his webcomic, his comedy webcomic, was a great place to put um, to put his you know his ideals in there. Right. And like That's this, the best place to put that. Anti porn, anti anything, like anti everything fun. And then eventually. His fans got angry, and he stopped, right? But then right. 2011, this character named Xanth, who was, like Steven said, a girl who rides a tricycle. In her first appearance, she just like went around and yelled at people on her bicycle, right? But then she became a 100% completely serious, like, like a completely serious character, and then she belonged to this thing called the Resistance. And then it gets to the point where the character Monique um, puts on patriarchy glasses. Oh no! No. That let her see the patriarchy matrix. No. No oh, boy. Kill me. Yeah. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. <laughs> It's so bad. That just sounds absolutely terrible. The, that point on, all the male characters who aren't like criminy, and even to a certain point, they bring up criminy's old shit, um, are just basically random men, straw man. That's and another thing, you know what's a hilarious thing? Is that he, in the webcomic, would do a weird side series. Like It would be like a little short alternate universe thing where it's the where there's a real matriarchy and then slick and his pig friend or like the resistance trying to stop them from oppressing all men but they're like literal nazis it's the stupidest thing ever it's so yeah. yep god it sounds like the kind of thing that would give me chance like web comics were a mistake yep where the comics were a mistake. <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki. Oh, God. Son of Hideo Kojima. It was literally like 
This, it's the saddest thing ever. Like, here, I'll show you, like, the change. Oh, boy. Did the art style change dramatically with it? Wait, um... Not to a certain degree. Got a little more simplistic. Like, the art isn't that bad, right? So, here. Here's one image. I'm just gonna post that in the episode chat, and we will, um... Just yeah, post this up. So that's, you know, that's a panel suggest. Here, let me get this up. Oh, sorry, yep. Yeah. And here's it up. Oh, that is the same image. Shit. God, I hate when it does this. Oh, my. I think maybe. On this note, we should wrap things up. All right, so that's one joke. And then here's Let's another more making the exact Let's opposite point. The show, because... Oh, yep, there's more of these. And the worst part about it is that, like, it's still going on. Oh, God. It's not like Buckley, where there's improvement. He seems to be making a decent webcomic now. It's still the same shit. Same shit, different year. Yep. Um, Let me go on this Sinfest well, front page right now. Yo, we were having a good time before you came on talking about... I I don't even remember. And then you bring this sad... We were talking about the purity... Webcomic that sucked. But it's okay, guys. It's okay. Because you know, we got we are number one. Yes, we, got, we sure we got, did. We are number one. We are number one. And that made everything one. worth it. This one is one of my favorites. I just after after that video, we are. And now I'm looking one. through, and I'm pretty sure there's some weird side story about Lady Liberty, who was a character, and Uncle Sam, and then they're just weird giant Uncle Sam robots. What the fuck? Does it say Biz Bioshock Infinite part of this? Apparently. Alright, well that looks like we're about to draw to a close here. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Sinfest oh, is quite oh, literally oh. the worst thing ever. Did someone just put furry porn in the episode? What the fuck? No. Man? No, I did not. Well, I, I think that's it for tonight. That's I think... I thought I stopped. I thought I quit screen sharing. Oh, well, okay. I think I think we had a very good episode tonight. We had some ups, we had some downs, we had some porn. It wasn't me this time. It wasn't me. Like, yeah, I didn't do it. I'm Congratulations, in. Michael. I'm so proud everyone. of you. Hey. Michael's evolved. I am innocent as a I can't, I can't believe virgin. Steve's a filthy degenerate. I'm just a... I don't know what happened. I yeah, think, I think, my, I think my Discord glitched. I think my Discord glitched, guys. Yeah, sure, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, it glitched, as in you clicked the porn. You switched to a different tab. Well, at least we know what Steven's doing after the show. <laughs> I don't know I what the like fuck you're all talking show. about. I just click something, and like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know his last name. I'm going to pay I furry. I ain't no goddamn furry. Yeah, you are, Steven. Just a minute. I don't know, goddamn furry. I don't know what the fuck y'all talking about. You're yes, yes, motherfucker. You're so deep in the furry closet. We are number no, two. guys. No, he's right. He's not a furry because he only wants to have sex with dead animals. Because no, you know. Jesus Christ! What the fuck? No, because you? because Nico's a hot dog. No, fuck. <laughs> Fucking hell! What the? Fuck? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, Steven Nico OTP forever. Never five get. It's a romance yes. for all time. We are number yif. I, I ain't yif. no goddamn yif and furry. Yes. That only yif and furry that here is Michael. That sounds like something a yifing furry would say. Also, it sounds like something somebody who's not a yifing furry would say. No, no I, that's, it, it definitely sounds like something a yifing furry would say. Deny everything. <laughs> That was a good episode of the X Files. Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> what was it about? 
uh, God, what was that episode about? Uh, was Wasn't that the one where uh, the where where Scaldi gets abducted? That oh yeah, season two. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was to hide the fact that she was pregnant. That was back when X was still a thing. By the way, rip him. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not no fucking furry. Don't worry. <laughs> we think fur suits are weird too. God no. Um, God okay. no. Fur suits. Jesus fucking Christ no. Those are weird. So what do we learn today, guys? Um, Stevens are furry. I ain't no goddamn web furry. Make, web, web comics make me want to be dead. And um, we are number God, one. God, you accidentally click a ro- the wrong link and people start assuming things. Jesus Christ. I think we learned a lot today. I think we really grew as people. I think that we can all safely say that every single one of us is number one. Indeed, We're truly. all number one. Except yeah. for furries. Furries are the worst. Okay, is there please, oh, okay. is there a rich, is there is there an edit of that shirt? What? We are all number one. <laughs> yeah, like I would love that. I would love that. But no, but for each other. I'm Christmas. still waiting on that saving Christmas edit I asked for. We are all saving Christmas. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. right on that note. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you night. for tuning in to the shit show. Good luck. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.